so overall, I think the biggest rule of thumb and the biggest takeaway, if you remember one thing from this video, it's that I couldn't have it all. So I was trying to fight my natural, not only my natural color, but also my natural texture. I have really fine hair. I also have a lot of hair, but my hair is really fine. So I'm even more susceptible to tangling, to damage from chemicals. And so for me, I've had to be extra careful. Good on you if you have really strong, lovely hair and you haven't had to like, you know, do a lot of these things that I've had to do. But if you're like me and you're finding that your hair is breaking off, I will say, I've gone through, in the last year and a half, a period where my hair completely, the entire top layer of my hair broke off. So I had like a mullet going, I'm not even exaggerating, like a total mullet into the top. And then to the point where I couldn't even wear my hair, I had to wear like a half up, half down because I had like so little uh, hair at the top. It was just, it looked horrible to wear it down. So. That was for quite a while, but it all started in the back where my hair was really like, it just started kind of, it, it, my hairdresser was like, oh, did you maybe like burn your hair with a, with a hot tool or something? It just looked, it started coming out in sort of little chunks and then it kept getting progressively worse. So I think that's another thing to keep in mind is like, even though your hair might, you might get your hair dyed and you're like, I'm in the clear, it didn't fall out that can happen over time. That's what happened to me. It started happening over time because of the choices that I was making. And now I feel like I've finally found that like perfect, for me at least, this perfect happy place of having healthy blonde hair that I'm actually able to sustain. And that's why I wanted to sit down and make this video because I've definitely made a lot of mistakes. I've made some good choices and I made some bad choices. So I wanted to share some of the things that have really helped me with my hair journey. I'll get a little closer so you can see. So this is actually my natural texture. And this is kind of how I wear my hair most days. I only straighten my hair every now and then. I straighten my hair about twice a month now, but this is how I prefer to wear my hair. I love to let it air dry and then actually sleep on it because the day that I take a shower and let it air dry, it's a bit puffy for me at this point. And so I actually like sleeping on it. Then it kind of creates this just like tousled, tousled way. <laughs> say that word. <laughs> Basically gives me this like lived in kind of hair uh, with waves. So I, I'm very, very happy with my natural hair texture and that's been a big attributing factor to my ability to keep my hair healthy as well as being super bleach blonde. I think another big myth that we're told or that I was telling myself at least was that it's like products that make a difference in your hair. And products really can make a difference. I'm actually gonna walk through a lot of the products that have made a big difference to me. But truthfully, I think the biggest changes in my hair were actually my actions. So not putting heat tools on it, regardless of how many hair protectors I sprayed in it or hair masks that I used, those things are all really helpful. But at the end of the day, just not putting heat on your hair is gonna be honestly the most impactful thing that you can do. For those of you that do deal with inflammation or um, you know you work a really high stress job like I do, I have really bad scalp dermatitis and I really put off going to a dermatologist for a really long time just because like most women I feel like I was deprioritizing my own health and my own situation and just focusing on other things but I was trying natural solutions, I was trying the tea tree oils, the coconut oil, I just had such a horrible what's the word, dose of it, a horrible uh, flare up of it so often that it wasn't until I went to a dermatologist and I got prescribed actual like medicated shampoo, a medicated topical solution that I now, my dermatitis comes back every three months or so. I just, I'm always gonna have a stressful life. I work a stressful job, that's just what I do, who I am. And so I can't really 
change that part of my life. As many boxing, meditation, yoga classes I can take, I'm still just gonna, I'm just a stressed out person. <laughs> so, so it was really helpful for me to have the medicated shampoos and the medicated topical solution as an option for me. And frankly, once I got my scalp to not itch so much and I stopped picking at my scalp so much, it really allowed my hair to grow and to actually, to not break my hair off because I think that's why my breakage started happening so much in the back of my head because I was just like scratching the back of my head and picking at my scalp and so yeah, I would say the two biggest things if you take away from this video, don't apply heat and then if you do have issues with your scalp, just try to get them taken care of. It's worth the money to go to. You're already paying so much for your hair dye, your hair cut, like it's worth it to just go to a dermatologist and really get that taken care of because a happy scalp means happy hair. <laughs> it really does. Yeah, and on and that note, there is a product that I do use as well. My hairstylist was blown away and I think this is something that I haven't seen a lot of women talking about. I feel like when we talk about hair loss or we talk about hair growth, it's usually in reference to like men that are balding, but we deal with this too as women, whether you just had a child or you're dealing with like stressful circumstances in your life. So I, when I was really desperate, I definitely did research. I do love to always try to find a natural solution first, but I was so desperate. Like I said, I had this mullet and I really, really, really needed my hair to grow back. And as I was researching, the only thing, not to say it's not the only thing that works, but the only thing that's actually scientifically proven to and like you know in clinical trials and stuff has proven to have hair grow is what we know as the public as Rogaine. Rogaine is a name brand it's actually called Minoxidil which is a topical solution and hers I really like because it's a subscription service they just ship it to your house it's about twenty dollars a month and for me it's worth it I also like having it in my bathroom I don't feel embarrassed like someone's gonna walk in and be like oh Rogaine even though none of my friends would do that but you know what I mean like it's just you don't really want to have Rogaine sitting out so this is a little more undercover I put it on my hair in the morning and at night and I swear to you this really has it takes a while you're not gonna see hair growth in like the first month the first two months even the first three months it wasn't until about six months six to nine months frankly of using this that my hairdresser was like your hair is growing like it's supposed to <laughs> I used to go into the salon and I would have like an inch of regrowth after not being at the salon for four months. And now she's like, your hair is growing at the pace that it should. I'm seeing so many new hairs sprouting, like it's the healthiest I've ever seen it. They keep telling me that every time I go, so I feel like I'm onto something. But yeah, I, I definitely think this makes a huge difference as far as having my hair grow. Downsides, it does not smell good. It is a chemical, so. I apologize for it not being natural, but it works. I will link everything down in the description box below so you can check those out if you want. I've tried so many products over the years and these are truly the ones that I find are just like worth the money. I'm gonna start with in the shower. So when I'm in the shower, there's a couple things that I use. One of them is actually, let me get the camera to focus. Is, is probably kind of surprising, if you maybe never heard of this before, but I actually don't use shampoo if I can help it. So I use this, is, this is not a shampoo, this is a apple cider vinegar rinse. And you just put it all in your hair, rub it in just like you do a shampoo, let it hang in the, out in there for like five minutes and then rinse it out and it just clears out your scalp from all the like sweat and gunk and dirt and cleans your hair in the same way that a shampoo does, but it doesn't strip your hair, which I find is particularly important as a blonde because I like to be like a more ashy kind of blonde and that involves putting, of course, like toners and stuff on it. And so the longer I can preserve that and not go super brassy, the better. So I really love this. This is by DP Hue and yeah, I'm a big, big, big fan. And then for conditioner, if I want something lighter, I will either use a DP Hue gloss, but this is something I use at least once or twice a week, and it's a hair mask. And this is like the hair masks of all hair masks, in my opinion. It is expensive, but it does last a long time, and you can feel the difference. 
as you, it's sitting in your hair, you let it sit on your hair for like five to 10 minutes in the shower. This is the Kerastase, I forget what it's called exactly, but it's like severe damage. It's for like the most severely damaged hair possible. This is the mask and it is just incredible. It smells incredible and it really, like I can tell when I get out of the shower after I use it, my hair is super shiny and I just love this mask. I honestly use this almost like a conditioner just because I don't wash my hair that often, maybe twice, three times a week at the most. And so I do use this after and I love this. It doesn't weigh my hair down. So yeah, big, big fan of this one. So this is not something that I use regularly, but I do use this to preserve. Like I mentioned, I do like being like an ashy blonde. And if you're worried about keeping that kind of cooler blonde look, I'm a huge fan of this mini Malibu rehab. I actually started ordering these off of their actual website, but you can get them on Amazon. And it's a little kit and it comes with two, two, pieces. It says you can do it every week, but I actually find it kind of dries my hair out a lot. So I only do it every three weeks and it really just cuts down on the brassy yellow tones kind of in between. Cause I only go to the salon every three to four months to get my hair. I probably should go more often for tone, but like I said, I don't prioritize that. <laughs> and so this is a way to keep it kind of cool in between going to the salon. So if I do straighten my hair, I like like letting it get really disgusting. I hope a lot of guys are watching because it's really sexy content here. But I let my hair, my scalp get super disgusting because this is like very purifying. It really just like gets, like you can feel it like gritty, like it like gets all up in your scalp. And you use this first, then you use this like purple conditioner. I will say it's not enough for me personally. It's very drying. If I just use the two of these, I will finish it with the mask and that's just a glorious combination and you'll come out and you'll have that just like freshly toned, no brass hair and I'm obsessed. This is such an inexpensive way. I think this whole kit is like $7. It's an inexpensive way to look like you just got a tone or you just went to the salon. So yeah, big, big, big fan of this. And this is probably not shocking. I already talked about Olaplex a little bit, but after I get out of the shower, I actually don't use the Olaplex. I've heard if you like not to go, I've just heard this through YouTube and things like that, but I've heard like, don't go ham with Olaplex just because something about like too much of the proteins or stuff in your hair can make it a bit stiff. I'm not sure. So I've never actually tried the shampoo and conditioner, but I have used number six basically since it first came out because I really love a hair cream for my hair since I do have wavier, sometimes curly hair, depending on the humidity or where I am. I just love a cream. I love it. I find that it just looks the best on my hair before this. If you want a good substitute for the Olaplex, I've also used like the Living Proof leave-in conditioner cream. And I was a big, I used that all through high school and college, as long as that one was around before that. So I've just always loved a hair cream, always works really well for my hair. This is the Olaplex number six. And then I don't know why, I bought this when it first came out and I didn't like it, I didn't really use it, and now I use it all the time. So I don't know why I didn't like it in the first place, but essentially what I do is after I put the Olaplex number six in my hair when it's wet, after I get out of the shower, I just comb it through and then I do a little scrunch and then I just let my hair air dry. And then an hour or two later, I don't know about you guys, but I have, for having such fine hair, maybe it's because I do have so much hair, my hair takes forever to dry. It's kind of annoying, but once it gets to like a damp, almost dry state, then I'll actually take, you can see I've used, <laughs> used a lot of this, but I'll take this, rub it between my hands and then I'll just go all over my hair, but then particularly through the ends because as you can see, the ends definitely get drier and I want those to look shinier and piecier for this kind of like undone, yeah, just like lived in kind of chill, chill look about it. So that's what I use when I get out of the shower. And if I do straighten my hair, which I do, about twice a month if I'm you know, gonna take a lot of photos or I'm going to a special event or something and I just want that sleeker look, then I will blow dry and straighten my hair, but I always, always use 
a heat protector. And like I said before, this is not gonna totally save your hair. So if you're straightening your hair every day, it's not gonna matter if you put this on it. But if you're doing it every once in a while, this is a great one. This is the Bumble and Bumble Hairdresser's Invisible Oil. It smells really good and I just like, spray it all over, blow dry my hair, spray another coat on, straighten my hair, and then, yeah, this protects it. It's great, I love it. And then another key is when I do, I try not to use dry shampoo too regularly because it does clog the pores of your scalp. There is a lot of buildup over time. It is great though for kind of like camouflaging your roots a little bit as an unnatural blonde. It's kind of nice in between sessions to just spray some in there and uh, cover that up. But when I straighten my hair and I work out and I want to preserve the style for like a week, then I will use a dry shampoo. And this is my favorite. If they made a perfume out of this scent, like I don't know how Amika came up with this, but it's the best. Every time my friends come over, they always use it and they always like, oh, I forget how amazing this is, but I just love it. It smells great. I just like, even if I just need a little bit in the front, like bang, you know, gets a little greasy, then oh, it just makes my hair, especially in the summertime, if you go out and like sweat, then just spray a little bit of that in there and like, oh my God, you'll smell it all day and it smells so good. I just, I love it. So that's everything that I use. I will say invest in a good colorist that uses Olaplex. So I don't care where you live in the country, just make sure that they use Olaplex when they're bleaching your hair or ask for like a bond repair. Well, I, there are other bond repairs now, I think Redken has one, but as long as your stylist is putting a bond repair or protector, I'm not a licensed uh, cosmetologist, so I'm probably getting this wrong, but you want a bond protector so that when you are going through that bleaching process, that your, your bonds are protected, your hair is protected, and it's not gonna break off. That's a great first step. And then another huge thing for me, similarly to letting your hair air dry, a big piece of why I feel like I can let my hair air dry and I feel like it looks good <laughs> is that I invest in getting good haircuts. I know myself, like I, I totally understand and can justify in my mind like paying a colorist because like I see the amount of time it takes, I see the detail that goes into it. A haircut, I think sometimes in our minds can be harder to justify because it's like, especially for someone with short fine hair, I'm like, oh, that took like 20 minutes. I was in and out of the chair. But if you find a really great skilled stylist who can give you a great haircut that when your hair air dries, it just lays really nicely. You're gonna feel good about it. It's honestly worth the money so don't skimp if you want to be blonde i highly recommend like just make the investment because you're going to end up paying in the long run for trying to cut corners so that's what i found is that it is a lot of time it's a lot of money but it's totally possible and if you follow these kind of guidelines then you can have a happy life as an unnatural blonde <laughs>